in July of 2020, NASA launched their Perseverance rover from Cape Canaveral atop a ULA Atlas V rocket. The journey took Perseverance seven months as the rover traveled 472 million kilometers through space to land at the Jezero Crater on Mars and begin the search for signs of life. This crater is believed to have once been filled with liquid water, making it a prime location in the search for signs of life beyond Earth. Due to the Martian atmosphere being extremely thin, parachutes are not enough to ensure a soft landing on their own. After the chutes provide some initial deceleration, propulsive thrusters were needed to allow a sky crane to hover in midair and softly lower the rover down onto the surface to begin its work. An incredibly complicated and difficult maneuver that has to be completed completely autonomously due to the communications delay between Earth and Mars. Since then, Perseverance has been actively collecting rock and regolith samples from a wide range of locations and types of rocks for a planned mission to return those samples back to Earth for study and analysis. Initial estimates for the cost of a sample return mission were $7 billion. In September of 2023, though, an independent review board revealed significant problems with the planned program. Cost estimates increased to over $11 billion, and the sample return date was pushed from 2033 out all the way until 2040, with more technical issues being identified. While many different types of architectures were proposed, the one that made the most headway was sending a Earth return orbiter to orbit the red planet. Meanwhile, a separate lander is sent down to the surface of Mars. The samples are loaded on to a Mars Ascent Vehicle, or MAV. The MAV will then fire its engines, escaping Mars's gravity well, allowing the sample to rendezvous with the Mars orbiter. Quite a complicated and technically challenging feat, especially considering the rocket to, has to be so small in order to be feasibly delivered to Mars. The cost overruns and timing delays have now gotten to the point that they are deemed unacceptable by NASA and a new approach is needed. So finally, in April of 2024, NASA issued a request for proposals from the commercial industry to study more affordable and faster ways to bring these critical samples back to Earth for the first time. In June of 2024, NASA selected seven companies to conduct 90-day studies on the problem and come up with proposed solutions. These companies were Lockheed Martin, SpaceX, Aerojet Rocketdyne, Blue Origin, Quantum Space, Northrop Grumman, and Whittinghill Aerospace. However, in a surprise move, Rocket Lab was awarded an additional study on October 7th for their mission concept, well after the original selections were completed. When asked about the late addition, NASA was quoted as answering, NASA selection process allows for later additions at the selecting official's discretion. We don't have access to the full submissions, but NASA has released the abstracts for each of the proposed studies, and Rocket Lab's proposal does have several compelling factors going for it. According to the proposal, Rocket Lab's strategy for affordable planetary science missions that they've implemented over the past five years is uniquely suited to deliver a low-cost, rapid Mars sample return mission. Rocket Lab will reduce the cost and schedule for Mars sample return through a simplified mission targeting a total cost to NASA of less than $2 billion. Rocket Lab will challenge the program to hit a 2028 launch window to reduce costs and reduce risk, resulting in return of samples no later than September 2033, with potential for an earlier return in September 2031. Rocket Lab can reduce these costs by performing as a single management prime contractor and using commercial approaches under a firm fixed price, price structure. Rocket Lab's mission design is a two launch solution sized to Rocket Lab's Neutron launch vehicle. Launched roughly two weeks apart, Launch 1 will send the Earth return orbiter to orbit Mars while Launch 2 sends the Mars landing vehicle including the Mars Ascent Vehicle and a cruise stage on a direct entry to Mars. 
Samples will be delivered to the Mars lander vehicle by Perseverance, which will then be loaded onto the Mars Ascent vehicle with a robotic arm. After Ascent, the Earth return orbiter rendezvous with that Mars Ascent vehicle for sterilization of the samples and transfer followed by a return to Earth. While this is quite a challenging and complicated mission, Rocket Lab has actually demonstrated a lot of the skills and expertise needed to complete it through a series of missions that they have already executed on in the past. For instance, in terms of managing large contracts for the government, over multi-year time frames, Rocket Lab is already performing as a prime contractor for the US Department of Defense, manufacturing a constellation of SDA satellites and managing a large team of mission partners. Rocket Lab also demonstrated precise re-entry systems and targeting using their in-house propulsion and guidance and control capabilities in February of 2024, allowing for the successful re-entry of a Varda capsule which had been testing out manufacturing HIV drugs in a zero-G environment in Earth orbit. We also already know that Rocket Lab is capable of building interplanetary satellites as they recently just delivered two Mars science orbiters to Blue Origin for a launch for NASA. These of course are the two Escapade spacecraft which were ready for launch in 2024. They've also already sent a capstone mission to the moon for NASA using their small electron rocket and photon kickstage spacecraft, demonstrating their abilities to go beyond low Earth orbit into deeper space and other planetary bodies. Speaking of small rockets, well, it's obvious that a very small rocket is going to be needed to launch these samples back from Martian soil into orbit to rendezvous with the Earth return orbiter. And Rocket Lab is a pro with small launch vehicles as well, dominating the small launch industry with their electron rocket. Now, obviously it wouldn't be an electron going to the surface of Mars, but I think they do have this area pretty well understood. Speaking of rendezvousing in Mars orbit, while Rocket Lab has never docked two spacecraft together, they have demonstrated pinpoint accuracy on a number of missions, including one recently for Astroscale, where they sent Astroscale's spacecraft to inspect a piece of space debris in low Earth orbit, sending the craft extremely close to a dynamic moving object. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that little cinematic section I made. You wouldn't believe how long it takes to put together all that footage, all the audio, try to synchronize it, do all the editing, the background music, all the rest. So yeah, definitely uh, hope it was worth it and hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do consider giving me a follow if you haven't already. And if you are already a subscriber, well, thank you so much as always. So that's kind of the high level overview of the Mars sample return mission. Hopefully you have a better idea about what it's all about now. And first of all, I do want to just make it very clear. Rocket Lab here is like one of eight companies and it's only studying the issue to make a proposal. It hasn't been awarded anything beyond a $700,000 study grant. So there were a lot of people online on Twitter, wherever talking about this as if the contract was won and I saw a few articles on sites saying stuff like that. So I just wanted to make very clear, no, they're just in the mix, one of eight. So that's like a one in eight chance that they will end up landing the contract. Now, having said that, as I went over in the intro, I think there are a lot of compelling reasons why Rocket Lab makes a lot of sense for this contract with the Varda re-entry, the interplanetary missions with Capstone, building out those Escapade spacecraft, uh, experience with small launch, Neutron coming online at the right time. I did wonder when we originally heard about this MSR request for proposal whether Neutron would be big enough to pull it off, but looks like it is, so that's exciting to see. SpaceX, always a big gorilla in the room when it comes to these contracts, is bidding their Starship, so maybe there's a chance here, right? Because when you look at SpaceX's bid, Starship, the way it's built, will have to refuel in low Earth orbit before setting off for Mars. That means there's a lot of extra mission complexity refueling the ship in orbit in order to go to Mars. Obviously, it's a lot bigger ship than Neutron is. Now, they are quite cheap to build when you talk about 
mass manufacturing them and getting those economies of scale kicking in. Plus stainless steel is a fairly cheap material from what I understand. And SpaceX is really working on this anyway because they do want to send Starship to Mars regardless. So, you know, it's an issue they were already working on. Maybe they have a bit of a head start there, but it is a massive vehicle to send a few tiny samples all the way back back to Earth. Uh, it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Lots of different proposals. Personally, um, Rocket Labs, I think, makes a lot of sense, but we'll have to wait and see on it. And do keep in mind that value, right? Rocket Labs' current backlog sitting at $1 billion. Obviously, if you add $2 billion to that, we're now looking at $3 billion. So this would 3x their total backlog, going from $1 to $3 billion. And two-thirds of it being this one mission would be absolutely massive for the company. It would be so, so exciting if they could get this. And not even just for the contract value, but also the prestige and the notoriety comes with bringing Mars's first samples back to Earth, I think would be absolutely amazing. So exciting when you think about this mission, plus Rocket Lab's planned Venus mission, really getting out there, doing those very difficult interplanetary missions, searching for life in the solar system, in two different planets, uh, really amazing stuff. And I really, really hope this one does happen. So when you think about future catalysts and future growth of Rocket Lab, obviously this is now the biggest one out there by far. Again, uh, technically a one in eight chance of them getting it, but I would say their proposal is probably stronger. So maybe it's like a one in four chance. Let me know what you think down below. Obviously, Blue Origin, SpaceX, Northrop, and a lot of other companies in the mix. Lockheed, certainly no one to count out, of course. Uh, wouldn't be easy by any means. But if it did happen, would be absolutely massive. The other confusing part is why Rocket Lab's proposal was re-added after the fact. I really don't know about that one. Maybe they had some issues with it. They had to update. And then once they submitted those updates and fixed whatever problems there were, they got re-added. Some people think this is a good sign that, you know, NASA liked their proposal so much that they went back and added it, even though it didn't make the original cut. But then the question becomes, why didn't it make the original cut? Because apparently they did submit it along with the others. So I don't really know what to make of that, but you let me know what you think about about it down below in the comments, whether this is a good sign or a bad sign, or it doesn't matter at all. Probably make a new video down the line talking about other potential catalysts and new contracts coming up for Rocket Lab, but by far now, this is the most important one to watch for as the study completes. Really can't wait to find out what happens. I expect it to be, you know, they said 90 days for the original contracts. Apparently this study isn't gonna delay the original one. So maybe we're talking of uh, uh, several months. Uh, I don't really know when NASA will decide, but I assume they have to take their time after the study is complete to analyze it all and have their own experts go over it and decide how feasible it is. Uh, Rocket Lab's bid of $2 billion, I do believe is significantly under a lot of these other bids. So so they have that going for them as well. And yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Really exciting announcement coming out, but don't want to get too carried away unless or until they do actually land that big contract. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. I'll check out your thoughts on this contract down below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.